Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about grief. Are you mourning the loss of a loved one, human or pet? Did a long-term relationship end and you're feeling the loss? Have you experienced a traumatic event recently? Learn how to make grief less overwhelming in this month's episode, focusing on back to school. Ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach Julie Caraccio on clearing the clutter inside and out as she teaches you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life. Julie Caraccio destroys the box and examines clutter in all areas – physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, relationships, health, finances, and more. Today's episode was inspired by a couple things, and I'm just going to have a note at the beginning. I am grieving. I feel like the universe had my back a little bit because I sketch out episodes usually for the year, put down ideas, saw that for the first time I'd have an episode coming out on 9-11, thought because of 9-11 affected many people, and so I'm going through this process right now of grieving. You're going to have to bear with me if I sound distant or monotone because I'm in a really challenging place right now and reading about grief, I kind of have to separate myself. So I'm very grateful that this ended up happening because it's helping me through my grieving process. I was inspired, as I mentioned a moment ago, because of 9-11. I didn't lose anyone on 9-11. I didn't know anyone personally. And when I started my journey at ClearSight, and we have Judy, who is my first ever spiritual teacher, have an interview with her this month. I'm really excited about that. One of the first exercises we did, well, where are you holding on to? Where's energy stuck in your body from 9-11? And I thought, well, I don't think there's any in mine because I didn't lose anyone. I was in Los Angeles at the time. I was really wrong. I had a lot of stuff still stuck in my field, and I'm betting I'm not alone. For those out there that are like me that perhaps didn't lose anyone and didn't think they were affected. I had two really interesting spiritual things happen, events happen to me on 9-11, which I'm completely grateful for because that helped me keep the faith and believe we're eternal and life goes on. But you might be holding on to some trauma and some grief from 9-11. We've all had grief at some point, as someone once said to me. It's about learning to ride through the waves and not completely crash on the beach. What is grief? Grief is a response to loss. It's the emotional suffering of something or someone being taken away. Could be divorce, a relationship, a loss of health, job, financial stability, a miscarriage, a death of a pet, the loss of safety after trauma, the loss of a dream. Once had someone say to me, losing something that we would view as insignificant could be significant to someone else. So I'm going to encourage you not to judge another's grief. I see this a lot with pets and when people post that their pet died, they downplay the significance because the pet isn't a human. And so I would just say to you, be aware. Just because you don't understand it, be respectful of the person who is grieving. The grieving process. The majority of my research today came from Harvard's Help Guide online. First and most important, grief is an individual process. When I get interviewed a lot, I always emphasize that the work I do is an individual process. I believe too many times, and not just with grief, that we think this is how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be this neat little box. I go through A, B, C, D, E, and then I'm done. Healing takes time. It's gradual. And now is the time to be patient and loving with yourself and others. Acknowledge your pain. 
talk a lot about feeling your feelings. There's an episode just on that, feeling your feelings. Accept that grief can trigger many different and unexpected emotions. I'm going through this now and it's accurate. I have burst into tears while in public, not fun, but I'm not beating myself up for it. Had people stare at me before, I can have them stare again. Recognize your grieving process is unique. You're not gonna have everything in a neat little box. Get support with trusted people, so important. If you can't be face to face with someone, use Skype or Zoom. I believe it's really important to be able to physically see that person. Take care of yourself physically. Now, I'm being challenged with this right now. The grief is really fresh, and so I've had about 10 days of complete emotional comfort food, the reason why they call it comfort food eating, but I'm not beating myself up. I'm allowing myself the space to do this. And recognize the difference between grief and depression. And I'll talk a little bit later when perhaps we've been stuck in grief too long. There are stages to grief. This is from psychiatrist Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. I didn't realize that this, what I had understood the stages of death, that they are applied to the stages of grief. She had worked with terminally ill people, and these are the guidelines that she has. It's not set in stone. The first stage is denial. This can't be happening to me. The next is anger. Why is this happening? Who's to blame? Bargaining. Make this not happen or make it happen. And in return, I will fill in the blank. Depression. I'm too sad to do anything. And finally, acceptance. I'm at peace with what happened. These feelings are all natural. And not everyone goes through the stages. Remember, it's individualized. You may not go in order. You may skip around or feel like you have them all at once. There is no one size fits all. Just be prepared that these are the things that are going to come up. What else are you going to experience? Shock and disbelief. Right after a loss, it can be hard to accept what happened. I know I started to go into denial, wishful thinking. You may feel numb have trouble believing that the loss really happened, or even deny it. When my grandmother died, for a few months afterwards, I'd pick up the phone to call her. I knew she wasn't there, but it, like momentary loss of memory. Sadness. This is probably the most universally experienced symptom of grief. You also may feel empty, despair, yearning, or deep loneliness. You may cry a lot or feel emotionally unstable. Guilt also comes up. You may have regrets or feel guilty about things you did or didn't say or do. You may also feel guilty about certain feelings. I had a friend of mine who his partner was sick and he cared for him. He had a, a, a long illness and there was relief. Relief was part of the emotions when he died. And if someone's taken care of someone for a long time, they might feel guilt that they felt relief. And after death, you may even feel guilty for not doing something to have prevented the death, even if there was nothing you could have done. Anger. Even if the loss was nobody's fault, you may feel angry and resentful. You may be angry with yourself, God, the universe, doctors or even with the person who died for abandoning you. You need to blame someone for the injustice. Fear. A significant loss can trigger a bunch of worries and fears. You may feel anxious, helpless, insecure. You might even have panic attacks. A loss can trigger fears about your own mortality, of facing life without a person, or responsibilities you may now face. Physical symptoms of grief. I didn't even think as I started this process that there would be physical symptoms, but there are. You can have fatigue, nausea, lowered immunity, weight loss or weight gain, aches and pain, 
and insomnia. Stumbling through grief. Seek support, whether that's friends, family, a coach, a psychiatrist, a support group, your faith. Now is not the time to go it alone. You need support. Seek it. Self-care. Now, more than ever, it's important to take care of yourself. The stress of a major loss can quickly deplete your energy and emotional reserves. Looking after your physical and emotional needs will help you get through this difficult time. Face your feelings. It's hard, and you might try to suppress your grief, but you can't avoid it forever. Feel your feelings, which include pain. When I'm eating comfort food, I'm trying to avoid my feelings. Avoiding sadness and loss only prolongs the process. Unresolved grief can also lead to depression, anxiety, substance abuse, and health problems. As I'm going through this grief, I understand now why people turn to drugs and alcohol. It's to shut off the feelings and to, to stop it. I also had a friend who's Girlfriend committed suicide because she couldn't get over her loss. I understand that now. I didn't understand it until I faced something so devastating myself. Express your feelings. I'm dealing with my loss through writing a book. It is one thing that's keeping me sane, and I'm having myself do it daily. You might want a journal. You could write a letter, make a scrapbook or photo album celebrating someone's life or your new life, or get involved in a cause or organization that was important to your loved one if you lost someone. Maintain your hobbies and interests. There's comfort in routine, and getting back to activities that bring you joy and connect you can support you in the grieving process. Don't let anyone else tell you how to feel, and don't tell yourself how to feel either. Shut down people who tell you it's time to move on or get over it. Let yourself feel whatever you feel without embarrassment or judgment. I told you I burst into tears. I wasn't going to judge myself. I have complete compassion for myself. Remember, it's okay to laugh, find moments of joy, and let go when you're ready. A relative of mine got married a couple years after her husband died. Some people would be critical. I view it as awesome. You fell in love with someone again. And if you have crappy opinions like that, keep them to yourself. Losing money because you aren't organized? Tired of spending hours looking for things? Stressed out? Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie Caraccio can support you. Be aware of triggers. Anniversaries, holidays, and milestones can reawaken memories and feelings. Be prepared for an emotional pow and know it's normal. If you're sharing a holiday, talk to people ahead of time about their expectations, how you can honor someone if you've lost someone, or for them to be prepared, you might need to go into a bedroom and cry. Take care of yourself physically. When you feel well physically, you're better able to cope emotionally. Combat stress and fatigue by getting enough sleep, eating right, and exercising. Don't use alcohol or drugs to numb the pain of grief or lift your mood artificially. Again, I understand why people do that. It dulls the pain. I haven't turned to drugs and alcohol because I'm aware. One time I'm super grateful for all the personal development work I've done and the spiritual path I'm on because I have awareness. I'm depressed right now. In the past, I don't think I knew when I was depressed. And I, looking back, I can see the times in my life where I was depressed. So I have enough awareness that it's keeping me from doing something that would be unhealthy like that. And I'm not going to eat junk food forever. I'm giving my time, my body, my mind, my soul to do some junk food eating as a part of my process. 
when grief becomes complicated grief or depression. The sadness of loss is something that never goes away completely. The key is it shouldn't remain center stage. If your pain is constant and severe and prevents you from moving forward and living your life again, you may be suffering from complicated grief. Complicated grief is being stuck in an intense state of mourning. You may have trouble accepting a death or be so preoccupied with what happens that it disrupts your daily routine and undermines your relationship. To the time someone you love and trust to check in with them. Do, do I have these symptoms? Because here's what is going on when you have complicated grief an intense longing and yearning for a deceased loved one or for things to be differently. Intrusive thoughts or images of your loved one or loss. Denial of the death or loss or a sense of disbelief. Imagining a loved one is still alive or the life you desire is possible. Searching for a deceased loved one in familiar places. Avoiding things that remind you of your loved one or loss. Extreme anger or bitterness over your loss. And a feeling that life is empty or meaningless. If a death or event was sudden, violent, or otherwise extremely stressful or disturbing, complicated grief can manifest as psychological trauma or PTSD. If you're feeling helpless and struggling with upsetting emotions, memories, and anxiety that won't go away, you may have been traumatized. If this is you, seek support. And there is no shame in seeking support and asking for help and saying, I'm stuck. I don't know how to move forward. I can't get past this. Seek help. If you're experiencing symptoms of complicated grief or clinical depression, Talk to a mental health professional right away. Left untreated, complicated grief and depression can lead to significant emotional damage, life-threatening health problems, and even suicide. I mentioned my friend's girlfriend that committed suicide after the loss of her child. She just could not get over that loss. She had another child that was still alive, but her loss was so significant, she wasn't able, and she was getting help and in support groups, and she couldn't get past it. Contact a grief counselor or professional therapist if you feel like life isn't worth living, wish you had died with your loved one, blame yourself for the loss or for failing to prevent it, feel numb and disconnected from others for more than a few weeks, are having difficulty trusting others since your loss and are unable to perform your normal daily activities. Please, please, please get support if this is you or you know someone who has these symptoms. How to help someone who's grieving. I've seen this phrase a little bit on Facebook recently. Impact is greater than intent. Meaning, even if you meant well, you might be hurting or harming someone. So be really aware of your words. If you know someone who's unable to have kids, don't say, I struggled with infertility for 10 years, so I know what you're going through. If you have three kids and they aren't ever going to have a kid, it's not helpful. Be aware of what you're saying. Here's how you can help. Listen. How does a grieving person really feel? Thank God for my friend, Cotty. I have a voice of sanity, but someone that I can just vomit all my words over and who listens. Express concern. I'm sorry to hear this happen to you. How can I support you? Let the person talk, 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 talk. Many times people need to tell the story again and again. Be patient. When they are sharing the story, it's a way of processing and accepting with each retelling the pain lessons. By listening patiently and compassionately, you're helping your loved one heal. Ask how they feel. Emotions can change rapidly, so don't assume you know how they're feeling at any moment. If you've gone through a similar loss, 
share your own experience if you think it would help. Remember, people don't experience grief exactly the same way, so don't claim to know what the person is feeling or compare your grief to yours. It is not a grief contest. I've seen that happen. The emphasis on, is on listening and how they're feeling, not you. Accept whatever they're feeling. Let the grieving person know it's okay to cry in front of you, get angry, have a meltdown. Don't reason with them over how they should or shouldn't feel. Don't should all over yourself, as Tony Robbins would say. Grief's a highly emotional experience. So the person needs to feel free to express their feelings, no matter how nuts, without fear of judgment, argument, or criticism. Be genuine in communication. Don't try to minimize a loss, provide simple solution, or offer unsolicited advice. It's far better to just listen or simply admit, I'm not sure what to say. I want you to know I care. Be willing to sit in silence. Person might not feel like talking and don't press it. Often, comfort for them comes from simply being in your company. Can't think of something to say, offer eye contact, a squeeze of the shoulder, or a reassuring hug. Support them. Ask what you can do. Offer to help with a specific task such as helping with funeral arrangements, or just be there to hang out with or as a shoulder to cry on. You can support them by acknowledging the situation, ask what they need, tell them it's okay if they don't want to talk, you're there for them. Visit with them or call and follow up. A lot of time you're just shocked with the grief and kind of in disbelief and it's a long process. Follow up. Know that you are still supporting them. Life goes on, but for the grieving person, it takes a, a lot out of them. It takes a while. If the, someone has died, follow up right after the funeral. Follow up every week. Make a meal. Can you make any phone calls or do any emails on their behalf that might help? Gift cards for restaurants or one of the delivery services for meals. Writing a personal heartfelt note. When I know of someone that's died, I always like to write if it's the spouse or the child. If I knew them, it's really important to me to write a personal note. And I can't tell you how many times people have said to me down the road how much the note meant. If I get a card, I always write a personal note within it. Offer to pray for someone. I'm not a religious person, but I always appreciate it when someone says they pray for me. And I'm not religious, but I pray. Or tell them you're thinking of them, if it's genuine. I feel like, unfortunately, in America, we say you're in our thoughts and prayers, and it really has become hollow a lot of times. So whatever you're doing, be genuine and authentic with it. Can you offer to help out with kids or pets? Taking the dog for a walk. Laundry. Simple everyday tasks might seem like something they can't do or surmount. What everyday tasks can you help with? Consider buying them a self-care certificate, like for a massage or a facial, something that can help them physically. And watch for warning signs of depression. We talked about complicated grief, how it can turn into depression, PTSD. Be aware of that. Check in with them. What not to say. It's part of God's or the universe's plan. This can really make people angry. Some might respond with, what plan? I wasn't told. Not the plan that I had. Not what I chose for my life. No one asked me. Look at what you have to be thankful for. I'm grieving people. I know I have stuff to be thankful for. But right now, I'm not worried about gratitude. Don't force someone before they're ready into some daily gratitude practice and just don't say it now. They have lost something 
it's understandable. They don't feel like they have anything to be grateful for. He's in a better place now. You don't know if the person agrees with that. Keep your beliefs to yourself unless asked. And I would say, even if you are asked, tread lightly. This is behind you now. It's time to get on with your life. Sometimes people might not want to move forward because it, they feel it might be forgetting or disrespecting their loved one. Moving on is much easier said than done. Grief has a mind of it at its own and works at its own pace. Respect it. Don't use statements that begin with you should or you will. It's too direct. Use phrases such as have you thought about or you might try. Take actions from today's podcast. Recognize that your grieving process is a unique experience. Know that it will take time to grieve. Allow yourself time to grieve. Feel your feelings. Be aware of the five stages of grief so you know that what you are experiencing is normal. Practice excellent self-care physically and emotionally. Seek support. Check in with yourself if you haven't been feeling better over time or your grief is getting worse. Get professional help if you believe you have complicated grief or major depression. Support a grieving friend by listening and offer to help them in any way that you can. In this month's bonus, we are talking about obligation. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. See you next Tuesday at 1pm. Oh, 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 oh,